Yo, my G, I heard you keep danger noodles. That's whack, homie. That's dope. Well, yes, my fine sir. I am particularly familiar with keeping that of Naja Ilapide. I do not, however, know what you are talking about when you refer to danger noodle. I only work with venomous animals. Whatever, man. I've kept a ball python for three months, homie. What do you recommend is the best first venomous snake for me to get? Three months. Just remember that. Well, with that experience, I would only have to recommend Dendra Aspis polylepis. The one, the only, the black mamba. I think you are ready, my fine sir. Dog, I knew it! I told my mom I was ready for mambas. My friend's gonna think I'm the illest, dopest homie out there. Gonna keep mambas and yo, bro, that's just so freaking dope! I'm gonna cry! Hey, welcome back guys. My name is Bryson and in that intro I portrayed two aspects of the reptile keeping hobby in a somewhat humorous manner just for entertainment So don't stress. Hey guys before we get into this I just want you guys to know I've released my first episode of the podcast animals everywhere It'll be in the top link in the description down below go check it out I would really appreciate it if you guys can go check it out and subscribe. Thanks guys Secondly, I've got a huge announcement coming up in the next couple of weeks that I need your guys help with It's not necessarily the most exciting announcement, but stick around for it. I'd really really appreciate that Thanks guys now enjoy the video in today's video We are chatting about what it takes to keep venomous snakes so first of all, I'd say don't keep venomous snakes and I know that sounds hypocritical but the reality is so many people do it just because of the cool factor behind keeping something that could potentially kill you. So don't do it for those reasons and that's why as a broad statement, I'd say don't keep them. There are so many other amazing animals that you can keep and will not put your life in jeopardy so go keep those first. Secondly, these are my views and opinions. If you decide to go do something stupid and dangerous, I cannot be held accountable for that. Keeping venomous animals does not equal advanced keeper. In fact, there's a large amount of people who actually keep venomous who are far from advanced keepers. I've personally seen people buy venomous animals such as Tremerosaurus albolabris, your white-lipped tree vipers, because they think that buying these snakes will somehow level them up and make them more of an advanced keeper. This is not true whatsoever. You have to become more advanced before you even keep venomous animals. Like, it's not going to change your care level and how you care for your animals. If you are still keeping a ball python or a corn snake in somewhat terrible conditions, how is getting a venomous snake going to make you level up your care for the animal? It doesn't work like that. Surprisingly, if you keep venomous animals properly and do it well, there is in fact a very little risk factor involved. But that doesn't mean that there's no risk whatsoever. There still always is that risk of something happening, but when you do it properly, that risk is almost non-existent. Almost. So, one of the most frequently asked questions you get as a venomous keeper. What do you need to keep these venomous animals? There are so many answers to this question because it's basically endless. You need loads and loads of experience with these animals, not just going out and handling an animal for the first time. You need to spend countless hours in a room with a mentor, seeing how they handle these animals, seeing the different techniques they use on different species, the different ways that they'll approach the animal, open the cages. There's so much nuances to think about when you even want to consider working with a venomous snake. So you need loads of hours of just seeing someone else do it before you can even start the journey of slowly doing it yourself. A big one, knowledge. Whew! You need a ton of knowledge to work with these animals because you need to know this species acts completely different to this species. This animal is completely different to this animal even if they're in the same species. Because this is a female this time of year, she may act like this. You never do this. Don't pick up the snake like this because that's gonna make it do that. There's so much knowledge that you have to gain about the individual animal, how to care for them, how to handle them, as well as 
what to do if you get bitten, what their venom does, how do they act in the wild, what will different species do, will this one like coming out midday to bask, does this one like really high temperatures, there's so much more to learn about these animals and quite frankly you should never stop learning and advancing your knowledge base on these animals. Responsibility. Not only do you have to be completely responsible for the animals lives but you are responsible for the people's lives around you where the animals are kept. You have to think about every little thing. If you're getting an animal that means you are keeping it for its whole lifetime. That doesn't mean five to ten years. No, think of more like 50 plus years that you are going to be caring for that animal or need to find a home for it if you are not able to care for it. It's not just one disposable animal that you get two years later you lose interest get a new one that's not how it works yes there may be an aspect of trading in the reptile hobby but that still means that these animals are bouncing from good home to good home and not having to go to a really poorly kept facility where these animals will most likely be put down a big thing, headspace. You've got to be in a really good headspace to handle these animals. On days that I don't just feel right, I just got this gut feeling, I don't handle them. If you're on medication feeling sick, don't handle them. Yes, it may be a week, it may be two weeks, ask some friends to come over to help you. That's why you've got to be part of a tightly woven community in the venomous hobby. You've got to know people. So how you do that, get a mentor, start Get making friends, be nice to people, be a decent human being, respect people, ask questions, be a nice guy. That's that's basically how you make friends. Just just be nice and people will be nice to you. Be respectful, be thankful, be grateful. With snakes, you gotta expect the unexpected. For instance, you may have a snake that stays in the corner of the cage for 99% of the time. So you think, ah, it's okay, let me just stick my hand in the wall to change the water bowl. Eh, wrong move. Yes, it may not even go for you 99% of the time, but it all, all it takes is that 1% and then it could be over. I know of keepers who have had snakes for multiple years and the same individual snake, calmest as can be, you feed it, nothing happens. It's just, you know, a precious cute little snake sitting in the back corner of its enclosure until one day it launches out two meters out of the enclosure right at you because it thinks the food is there. What you gotta do? That's why you always have to expect the unexpected. That's why you don't open the cage right in front where the snake can launch out at you. You open to the side. There's a lot more that a mentor will teach you about every little nuance to keeping these venomous animals and that only comes with experience and knowledge. A huge thing and this mainly comes with venomous keepers that have had many years of experience. That is complacency. You're thinking, okay, I know this animal. Let me just do this. Get a bit too familiar and then things might happen. And you mustn't become complacent because then things do happen. So you want to avoid that complacency at all costs. You don't want to become lazy or complacent and just say, oh no, I'll just do this quickly with my hand. Oh no, I can't find the proper feeding tweezers that are long enough. Let me just use the shorter ones. It won't get me. No, you don't do that. Stick to your protocols. Don't handle the animals when there's no one else at home to take you to hospital if need be. I know guys, it's really tempting. Sometimes you need to clean these animals and no one else is home to rush you off to hospital if something ever happens. The thing is, you work as if something is never gonna happen, but you prepare for it, if that makes sense. Respect, you have to respect the animal. Respect its privacy, respect it when you're handling it, and don't do anything that'll make the animal upset because at the end of the day, if you're handling it in a way that you think, oh, it's safe, but it's also not respecting the animal, things go wrong and you may take a tag there. And then again, stick to proper handling techniques. Use a hook stick. Don't just reach in and grab the animal. There are so many ways to do this properly that really minimizes risk of you ever being bitten by these animals. You just have to always know that you must never become complacent and just just keep using those proper protocols that you have in place. 
before you even consider keeping a venomous snake you need a proper room to work with them. You can't keep them in your bedroom because there's way too much traffic. A, it stresses the animal out, it'll stress you out when handling them, when there's people around, when there's way too many places for the snake to hide if it crawls off quickly and you weren't able to hook it quickly. You need an escape proof room. It's just wisdom, guys. You need a proper room to work with these animals. The number one question we get as venomous keepers, what is the best first venomous snake? Well, I can tell you if you're asking me that, you're already not ready for a venomous snake. Simple as that. Yes, I understand you might be wanting to learn what's a better snake to start with. The reality is you can basically start with any species of venomous snake. It doesn't really matter as long as you've had so much experience with that particular species that you're wanting to work with. You should have had hundreds if not thousands of hours working with your mentor and with those particular animals before you even consider buying an animal. So that, that means that if you're asking what species should I get, you'll just get a species because it's the best first starter. No, you shouldn't do that. You must get a species because you love that species and because that species means something to you. Because if you don't like that species, you are not going to care for it properly. So get something that you really like. But that doesn't mean like start with a mamba, start with something crazy. You can basically start with anything, but that means you need to be guided buy a mentor and have so much experience working with that exact species that you want to get with a mentor. So if someone says, oh, get a spitter lapse because you want to work with cobras. If you don't like a spitter lapse and want to work with like other cobras like snouted cobras or whatever, don't get the spitter lapse as a starter. Wait a while and work hours and hours with that species that you want to work with under supervision of a professional before you even get that animal. That is my suggestion to you. So at the end of the day, there is no best beginner venomous snake. None of them have training wheels. The best beginner snake is someone else's. So go work with the mentor because that's how it should be done. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember to go out, learn, explore, inspire. Keep that knowledge. Live it.